Hello everyone, um, this is Nico speaking and um, the purpose of this video today is to show you some analysis I've done uh, regarding uh, Bitcoin's RSI. So my main question was, um, could I see from the data what happened to Bitcoin, uh, to the course of Bitcoin, once its RSI arrived uh, at a certain level? So I've indicated here some uh, levels like 60, 65, 70, 75, uh, etc. And I wanted to see what uh, happened to the uh, to the course of Bitcoin once it had arrived uh, at those levels. Uh, um, the main intention for that was to help me take a decision whether I should go uh, out of the uh, stock uh, of the miner stock or back into it um, uh, by looking at the data. Um, so um, in the previous video what I've done is I've, I've shown you a bit uh, uh, what is RSI. Uh, RSI can be displayed here on, in Yahoo Finance in the chart of uh, Bitcoin. Uh, currently we are looking at uh, an RSI of 81 uh, and uh, typically if it is above 80 it is uh, considered uh, as overbought. So currently we are at, at some kind of uh, red alert uh, phase. So that's why it's uh, quite important to understand what should we do. So the question is what happened in the past when it was 80 again? So, um, I, I, very quickly, I'm going to go through how I did uh, what I've done uh, in order uh, for, for, for mainly for completeness. Uh, so, first of all, I got the data uh, of uh, Bitcoin in this table from Yahoo Finance uh, starting from 2016 up to today. So, I took five years of data. Um, it, um, by the way, it's quite staggering to see that uh, this thing was uh, trading at, at the price of 300 uh, at some point. Uh, and now it is almost uh, 58,000. Um, so in order to compute RSI yourself, uh, and that's because you cannot download uh, the, the history of RSI, all, but you can download the history of the Bitcoin. So the, the way you do it is you compute uh, the difference uh, between the closing prices of today and the one of yesterday. And once um, and in this cell, you uh, look at whether that uh, difference was positive. And if yes, you put that number, otherwise you put uh, a zero. And um, in the column loss you do uh, the same but you look at whether the uh, change was a negative and then you flip the sign and you put it uh, in this column otherwise zero so then once you have the gain and the loss uh, then you go to uh, the column average gain where you take the average uh, of the past 14 sessions in the column average loss you uh, look at the average losses between the last 14 sessions in the column rs the relative strength you take uh, the ratio between the two and in the column RSI you rescale that number to go from uh, 0 to 100 uh, by using uh, this uh, formula so now this goes to 100. One additional thing I've done here uh, in the column called smooth RSI is uh, um, I've smoothened a bit the RSI by taking the exponential moving average so the first value is the same as uh, RSI but the second value is looking at the difference uh, first it's looking at the difference between the RSI and the previous uh, smooth RSI, starting which starts at the same value as RSI, times a multiplier, uh, which I took 20% because that number gives me back what I see at Yahoo Finance. Uh, and I, I add to that uh, the, the previous value of the RSI. So what this does basically is it is weighting the last value of the RSI much more than all the rest. So uh, you can see that uh, the smooth RSI and the RSI look a bit like this and the smooth one is, um, it, as it says, uh, smoothing out the fluctuations so you can see, you can trace back better uh, the course of RSI. So with these numbers I get back uh, as of yesterday 79.1 uh, which is uh, or was uh, the value that uh, was uh, recorded at uh, Yahoo Finance so this is uh, pretty much in line. So now uh, the way I looked at my question, which is what happened to Bitcoin when its RSI arrived at a certain level. Here I've put the levels I'm interested in. And then here in these cells, I say the following. If uh, I, I make an if statement and I say, if, uh, if the value of the smooth RSI here, 61.4, 
uh, is between uh, 60 minus 2 and 60 plus 2. So I look at 60 plus or minus this margin of 2. So if and uh, this value of smooth RSI is between 58 in this case and 62, then I say put in this cell a 1, otherwise put in this cell uh, nothing. So this basically table uh, contains uh, indicators, yes or no, whether uh, whether the RSI has arrived uh, at this level, plus or minus, a little margin. Um, so once I have this table of yes or no, uh, then I go to this table, uh, which says mean, and here I take uh, th this formula uh, which says if there is a one here so if it has arrived if uh, rsi has arrived at this uh, value then give me go and calculate the what is in this formula which is the minimum between the subsequent 10 lows so i look at the low value and i take the minimum of all the lows in the uh, course of the next 10 days relative to where I was in the beginning. So this number is going to be how uh, how low did I go, uh, the, the lowest of the lows, how low did I go uh, relative to where I started. Um, so this is a percentage. Uh, so in this case, the percentage was uh, minus 4%. So, when, uh, so in this particular case, when RSI was uh, 60, arrived at 60, and in this particular case, uh, it dropped, uh, the lowest it dropped, it was 4%. Um, so I do it for all the values I'm interested in, and then I go to this table where I do exactly the same, but um, I'm looking at the max of the highs. So here, uh, very similarly, I'm looking at how high did it go in the next 10 days relative to where it started on that instance. Um, why 10 days? At the moment, it is just a choice. Um, yeah. Uh, so then I populate these tables with numbers if I get my RSI at a certain level. Uh, then uh, I have this table also which says average and in this average I uh, actually compute the average um, between the closing prices, the closing prices of the next 10 days uh, relative to where I started. So I have the minimum, the maximum and the average. So the way it looks then, then uh, yeah, one thing before I show you the results, one more thing is that uh, then I compute here in order to have some uh, sensible uh, 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 results. I compute um, here the average uh, on the mean table. I compute the average of all the values I found when it arrived at 60. Then uh, I also compute similarly the average when it arrived at 65, etc. And then I go on up to 100. So 100, I don't have anything, that's why it has this error. So I have all the average uh, values uh, across those tables. And then I take these average values, the average of all the means, the maxes, and the average, and I put them on a graph. Um, so in this, this, so this is the resulting graph, and what I see here is the blue line is the minimum drops. So on this axis is the RSI. And let's start with that, and uh, 60, 65, 70, 75, etc. The blue line is how far did it drop, the lowest, and this orange line is how far up did it go potentially, and the gray line is the average. So what this graph shows me is that historically when uh, Bitcoin arrived at, uh, let's say, where we are now, 80, uh, then it had an upside potential on average of about 5% Bitcoin uh, with a very maximum value of 16.9 uh, and a very lowest value of minus 7%. What is interesting in this graph is the following, in my opinion. In my opinion, it's interesting to see that there is a steep rise in the upside between the 75 and the 80. And the 80. So that's what we witnessed uh, very recently, that there was, we passed uh, from uh, almost 35k of Bitcoin to nearly 55 uh, without understanding what happened in between. So there was a very steep rise here. And... 
and uh, then once we arrive at 80 there is a decline let's look at the average value there is a decline here so here once we arrive at 85 uh, I would say the, the decline kind of is critical because the minimum value you acquire here is minus 9.9 uh, .9, let's say 10 percent once it arrives at 90 uh, this is really red alert because uh, you uh, you risk a very very massive drop uh, in the value of bitcoin and you have very little upside the, the, your upside is nearly zero so uh, on the course, it is flat from the 60s up to the 75s. Between 75 to 80, you have a very steep rise here and here, while the risk to the up, uh, downside also um, is kind of linear in this uh, region. But here, the risk to the downside steepens and the uh, awards also get reduced. So that's interesting. For me, it says that um, around 85 if you are, if it ever goes there uh, for me that would be a red alert to uh, to have some action on my position um, the, the last thing I looked at is uh, I, I simply counted here how many uh, instances of uh, 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 of 60s did I have some how many instances of 65s I had in order to have some confidence in this uh, data so I see that uh, I had a lot of uh, data points for uh, when it was at 60 and uh, naturally this started declining more and more and more so this graph uh, may not be very representative for the 95 because we only arrived there three times and 95 times but nevertheless this is already something and the fact that this graph it does not uh, fluctuate too much but it is pretty um, uh, smooth uh, it gives me some confidence so that's about RSI. Uh, um, I, I, ver I would very much like to hear your thoughts about this. Uh, um, there is an extra uh, thing I've done. Uh, so uh, I'll show you. Is uh, I'm, I, I looked at the additional index uh, called the Tricks, and um, I'll show you on Yahoo Finance. And the, uh, Tricks can be found uh, here. Uh, you can load any indicator you want from this uh, uh, button. The, the reason why I I like to look at uh, tricks is uh, tricks means triple um, exponential moving average and the reason why I like to look at it is because it uh, uh, it kind of gives me the trend of uh, Bitcoin smoothened so uh, here I see for example that uh, in with my eyes I can see that uh, the trend is downwards and indeed tricks is uh, following it but from RSI I, I can't really see that because uh, at least when I am into that trend, because there is a lot of fluctuations. So Trix is killing all those fluctuations. And here I can see the uptrend and uh, of, of Bitcoin and the uptrend of Trix. So Trix for me is useful sometimes, maybe not always, uh, because I, I can see the trend. So here I already see that uh, in this graph, it starts flattening out, which means maybe perhaps that, uh, that uh, Bitcoin arrives at its maximum value. But I, I also wanted to see following tricks, uh, what happened uh, to Bitcoin uh, after tricks arrived at certain values. So I, I, I did pretty much the same. I got the data from Yahoo Finance and tricks is based on computing a triple exponential moving average. So here in this, uh, they explain it uh, pretty well in some uh, websites like here. So uh, for, you compute three moving averages the first one is on the price itself and you call it emma one exponential moving average then you smooth an emma one and you call it emma two and then you smooth emma two and you call it emma three so you nest you kind of do a nesting of three uh, exponential moving averages uh, you can find the formulas in this web you can find the formulas in this website here um, which gives you all the numbers uh, here you find all the uh, different uh, numbers so the way is what I have done here on, on, under tricks is I have computed it myself first I've computed the moving average uh, uh, oh, I re um, taking into account the closings uh, then I've computed myself uh, the exponential moving average Emma 1 which is simply 
uh, the last close minus the previous exponential moving average times a multiplier, which is 13.5% in this case, in order to reproduce the results of Yahoo Finance, plus the previous MA1. So that's the smoothening. Then you do exactly the same for MA2, but you take, instead of the close, you take MA1, and then you do exactly the same the third time. You look at MA3, and you take, you smoothen MA2. So finally, tricks itself is the relative change of MA3. So this is this gives you kind of the daily return. So how far, how much it went up and down in a percentage from one day to the next MA3. So that's tricks. Tricks. So tricks. 0.02 percent means that MA3 went up by 0 0.0 by 0.02 percent. So I've done the same with the three tables I've showed you. I asked myself uh, when was tricks in this range. I computed all the indicators in this uh, table, uh, the ones and the gaps. Uh, then I computed in the next table all the minimums, uh, maximums and averages. And the results are in this graph. So what I see in this graph here is um, uh, also a picture that is pretty much in line with this graph so that's also gives me some confidence it shows me right now tricks is at 1.24 so we are about uh, here and we see that there is a little bit more upside and then uh, and then Bitcoin uh, here and here starts uh, going drastically down. The upside goes down, the risk goes massively down here because you arrive at a minus 20% of uh, drop in Bitcoin when you arrive at the tricks of uh, 2.2. Uh, uh, so around 2 is the very critical value uh, according to this data. Here I counted also how many instances I had where tricks arrived at those values, and uh, here I plotted it. So, um, I, I, so I hope you find this useful. Uh, I, I would very much like to hear uh, what you think and whether this can be further improved. Um, uh, uh, I follow the discussions on uh, Discord. On uh, uh, mainly, I look at Hat8 and sometimes at the at the technical analysis. Um, so, if you have a question, please post, and um, I'd be very happy to happy to take it from there. Thank you very much. Bye bye.